Oh, here we go. Hi. If we could not meet the sun's cruel embrace, perhaps we might rebuke it. I don't know what that means. Oh, that's kids' treasure. Already we could generate the fields to protect us in times of strife. But these were small and simple things. To replicate them on a scale the size of a world. We lack the energy to make it so. Half the world, they said then. It is better than none at all. We tried. Again, we failed. A quarter, they asked. Even this we could not do. A sixth. An eighth, a tenth, they cried. The answer was still the same. Perhaps in time a city might be spared. But it was time we did not have. So we moved on. Wow. They make it all sound so desperate. And it's really depressing. Like how desperate they were to avoid death. Hi! I saw that! Wonder what's inside. That was creepy. There's that was like a, a fear out. Alma jump scare. Alright, that's one. Isn't it? Yeah, that's one. This music is so epic! Look at that! Okay. Alright, let's go in here then. I saw this earlier and I was like, how do I get that little fricker open? Here we go again. What is a fact? Is it fixed? Immutable? Certain in its existence and only awaiting discovery? Or might it be changed? Here we learned the answer, and thought that it might save us. They were used to command, to control, to own. But we soon discovered another use. When enough sat in thrall and were told to believe, their thoughts took on form. What was imagined became real. Wait, really? If a hundred minds could wish away a wall or create a tree, what might a thousand do? Ten thousand? More? Might we change the consensus and will the threat away? We resolved to send one into the sky where it might illuminate us all. Once placed, a sentence would be uttered. Make us safe. Make us whole, you mean? In this way, we would change the consensus. We would save the world. But it didn't work. <laughs> but it never came to be. I figured. <laughs> we sent a dozen of them skyward. But there was no way to maintain control. To direct the beam. To enthrall the world. To speak the words. So this was strange and dangerous. What we tried next was worse. But that's for the next cutscene. I'm predicting things left and right. I don't know if that's a good thing. All right. Oh no, that's the way I came in. So plug it in, plug it in up here somewhere. Hup. Jump. Another cutscene? Wow, another one. Alright. Before I even get into power source. It's interesting. Our first instinct was to travel back. To change the past. But we could not find a way. But forward. We could look forward. And so here we sought to see beyond ourselves. And know what was to come. First we watched to learn oh, our crap, world woman. succeed. But the answer was always the same. So 
so we moved on to other things. But she remained. The one you call Minerva. Oh, hello. In time, she too stopped looking. And instead, began to speak. She called out across time, in the hopes that you might be saved. She hid messages where none might find them, save for you and those within this place. Fascinating. How, wait, how are they seeing this? Logan! I'm tired of it. The cryptic warnings, the threats. Just tell us what you want. But they are. grasshoppers in our own eyes and we look the same to them imagine trying to explain all this to a two-year-old to a grasshopper when they said the will of the gods was unknowable they meant it literally i killed her you know i killed lucy it was the apple son it was juno I saw what she was what would happen if i let her live I could have stopped myself. I mean, there was a force there, but I didn't have to. I chose to. Desmond. Lucy was going to betray us and take the apple back to Abstergo. I saw the satellite launched. I saw them turn it on, and then it failed. Oh, Whatever's on the other side of that door, it benefits Juno. We need to be careful. God damn, Desmond. Why'd you wait so long to tell me? <laughs> Jesus. You just have to think I hate you now. But what do I... Over there? Is that where I plug the damn thing? Oh! Over there. Alright. I'm on my way, chickadoo. Hey there! And here we go. We only have two power sources, yes? No, no, we have three now. So that's two. What stories the temple will tell me today? Oh my god! I found all of these so long ago, and it was like, how do I get those freaking things open? I just didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to look. I'm dropping. I'm telling you, there's something down here. Don't be daft. I don't know. Maybe they were sleeping or something, and we woke them. Some kind of cryogenics? Or hibernation? I mean... How do we know what the hell they were doing down here? They were working on a bunch of different solutions, but nothing worked. It just went from one to the next, and then... I don't know. They must have left at some point. After the end. I wonder what the world would be like if they'd succeeded. I'm more concerned about what it'll be like if we don't. Salvation. Oh. They found a way. Too late for them. But not for you. your way. Find the key. The past will tell. Alrighty, then. Not yet. I have one more power source to plug in. Another cutscene. Yup. One of the last for this episode. A new world approached. One that was dark and cold. It would consume us. For we were flesh, and flesh is frail. Though suits and shields might offer comfort, such adornments would not suffice. Not to save us all. What are you so we doing? sought to change what we were. In this manner, we might thrive in a world made poisonous. It was Aita who volunteered to see if it might be done. Aita. <gasps> My husband. My love. In the end, it changed him. Ruined him. He was made a prisoner of the machines. The body might survive, but 
his mind became brittle to the touch. He begged me for release, for days, for weeks, for months. I pleaded with him to give us time to find another way. But, but there, there wasn't, wasn't one. one. Not, Not for, for him. him. Not, Not for, for us. us. Oh God, you killed him. I'm becoming more and more depressed and more and more confused. Oh, another cutscene. Is Desmond going insane? What is consciousness but a series of electrical impulses? And the body a vessel to hold these sparks. But it is weak. In time, it decays and crumbles into dust. Well, yeah, so does everything else, except Twinkies. We asked ourselves then, what if it might be replaced with something stronger, something better? So we forged a new vessel, one that might endure. It proved easy enough to enter. something more something wrong and so this too they abandoned I wondered though that was creepy right to turn away <sighs> Jesus woman don't ever become a therapist <laughs> No! That's not what I told you to do, Desmond. Why? Why on earth? Why do you do this to me? Let's try going up there. Will I reach? Of course I won't reach. I have to somehow get back up there now. Nice jump. And here we go. I think, yep. Plug it in, plug it in. Okay. So now we're ready to enter, we just don't have the key, correct? Is that right? I don't know, but there's no way I'm getting down over there. So let's go down. Okay. This episode was way longer than I meant for it to be. But I have to end it now because I'm at over 40 minutes. So... I hope you guys are enjoying Assassin's Creed 3. Leave a like if you are, and I will see you in part number 38, I think. Until then, farewell, my wonderful figments. Farewell.